today. We wanted to be honest with you guys on how emotional things are. A couple puts their struggle to conceive on YouTube. No one understands my grief. See the surprising response. We got contacted by a birth mom asking if we would consider adoption. And watch how love multiplies. Plus, Chef Lydia joins us live with a Christmas feast, Italian style, on today's 700 Club. Well, welcome to the 700 Club. President Trump has led the way in moving the U.S. Embassy in Israel to Jerusalem. Now it looks as though several other countries are going to follow his lead and relocate their embassies there as well. And here at home, many Democrats supported the idea of moving our embassy to Jerusalem in the past, but they criticized, excuse my voice, they criticized President Trump once he actually made the decision. Jennifer Wishon has the story. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu says he's already in touch with other countries that want to follow President Trump's lead and recognize Jerusalem as the capital of Israel and move their embassies there. I call on all countries that seek peace to join the United States in recognizing Jerusalem as Israel's capital and to move their embassies here. Already reports indicate the Philippines, Hungary, the Czech Republic and India are all moving in that direction. Despite international criticism, officials at the White House are taking a victory lap for what they're calling the president's courageous and bold move. Does the fact that he kept his promise uh, give him more credibility when negotiating in the Middle East? Uh, certainly, I think one of the uh, abilities to follow through on something you've committed to, as the president has done, but also let's not forget that this was something uh, that Congress voted on starting back in 1995 and has reaffirmed 10 separate times over the last 20 years. Um, this is something that the president uh, took action on, a very courageous and bold action. But some of the Democrats who supported measures to move the embassy to Jerusalem in the past seem to be betting Trump wouldn't keep his word. The president called their bluff. Senators Bernie Sanders of Vermont, Richard Blumenthal of Connecticut, Dick Durbin of Illinois, and Dianne Feinstein of California have all criticized the president's action. Not only did Senator Feinstein vote in favor of the 1995 Jerusalem Embassy Act, she was a key player in its passage. She's the senator who inserted the waiver provision that allows the president to delay the embassy move in the interest of national security, which secured the votes of 10 additional Democrats who were on the fence, giving the bill a veto-proof majority. Now she's calling the president's decision to move the embassy terrible. However, if Democrats followed their party platform, they'd support the president. The 2016 platform says while Jerusalem is a matter for final status negotiations, it should remain the capital of Israel, an undivided city accessible to people of all faiths. Similar language appears in the party's 2008 and 2004 platforms. President Trump says his actions are part of his new strategy to achieve a peace deal. Prime Minister Netanyahu says peace is not possible without Jerusalem as the capital of Israel. Jennifer Wishon, CBN News, Washington. Well, it's an incredible time for Israel, an incredible time for Jerusalem, an incredible time as well for Christians around the world because literally in our generation, we're seeing biblical prophecy being fulfilled. First 70 years ago, can a nation be born in a day? And in 1948, Yes, indeed, a nation was born in, in a day. And then Jerusalem reunified, the prophecy of Jesus fulfilled. Jerusalem no longer trodden under the foot of the Gentiles. And now, here's one for you, it's Isaiah 60. Arise, Jerusalem, let your light shine for all to see, for the glory of the Lord rises to shine on you. Darkness as black as night covers all the nations of the earth, but the glory of the Lord rises and appears over you. All nations will come to your light. Mighty kings will come to see your radiance. Look and see for everyone is coming home. Your sons are coming from distant lands. Your little daughters 
will be carried home. And that is happening today as we see uh, Jews returning to the homeland, to, to Israel, as we see nations now establishing their embassies in Jerusalem. Kings will come, nations will come. It's a wonderful time. Well, not everyone is celebrating. Palestinians took to the streets again today to protest President Trump's decision to recognize Jerusalem as the capital of Israel. Ephraim Graham has that story from the CBN newsroom. Ephraim. Gordon, hundreds of Palestinians clashed with Israeli security forces in the West Bank cities of Bethlehem, Hebron, and Ramallah after Friday prayers. But Jerusalem itself was relatively quiet after Muslim prayers on the Temple Mount. Chris Mitchell brings us the story from the Damascus Gate in Jerusalem. With threats of terror attacks and calls for rage, Israeli security services prepared for the worst. But at midday, things were relatively quiet in Jerusalem. Our units are located and can respond if necessary. We're hoping that this afternoon will continue to be relatively calm and quiet and that uh, Israeli police won't have to respond to any illegal or violent demonstrations. This is the Damascus Gate just outside the walls of the old city of Jerusalem, historically a place where there's been major disturbances, but so far today just minor skirmishes and this crowd behind me chanting slogans. One slogan called for martyrs and suicide attacks. This Muslim man expressed his view of Jerusalem's future. Jerusalem will be the capital of the world for Islamic emperor. We will write the justice for everybody all over the world. Writing broke out in the West Bank and Gaza on Thursday with chants of Trump, you will see, Palestine will be free. And clashes continued on Friday in Bethlehem and the West Bank. Palestinians consider all of Jerusalem to be theirs and want at least the eastern section of the city, including the old city's Temple Mount, Western Wall and historic churches to be the capital of a future Palestinian state. Following Trump's speech, Palestinian Authority President Mahmoud Abbas called for three days of rage. Abbas traveled to Jordan on Thursday to rally Arab support against Trump. He said that Trump had effectively withdrawn the U.S. from its role as a fair mediator between Israel and the Palestinians. We believe America, with this position, has distanced itself greatly as a political actor in the Middle East because it will not get back its previous role here. In Jordan, where more than 60 percent of the population is Palestinian, Jordanians protested outside the U.S. Embassy. And in Iran, demonstrators condemned Trump's decision and Iran's leaders called for another intifada. Another senior Palestinian official, Jabril Rajoub, said that Vice President Mike Pence is not welcome in the Palestinian areas when he visits later this month. Pence was due to meet with the boss in PA-controlled Bethlehem, but Rajoub said the meeting would not take place. In his speech, Trump said two decades of not moving the U.S. Embassy to Jerusalem hadn't brought peace. His team reportedly believes that the Palestinians and other Arab countries need for the U.S. at this time is strong enough to weather the current storm. Chris Mitchell, CBN News, Jerusalem. The House of Representatives took a major step forward this week to stopping your tax dollars from being used to reward Palestinian terrorists. The so-called pay-to-slay payments have happened for years, but the parents of an American killed by a t Palestinian terrorist have been speaking out, and they pushed Congress to take action. Abigail Robertson brings us this story now from Washington. Stewart and Robbie Force were heartbroken to learn their son Taylor died in Israel, stabbed by a Palestinian terrorist. Those feelings became worse when they learned the assailant was hailed as a hero and richly rewarded for the murder of their son through money from U.S. taxpayers. There was something totally foreign to us. We couldn't really process that. We still probably can't. It's a surprise to many. The Palestinian Authority gives terrorists to their families monthly payments and benefits like health care, paid for in large part by the millions in foreign aid handed out by the U.S. each year. Rewards from the ongoing practice, known as pay to slay, go even higher depending on the brutality of the crime. And there were some videos that we weren't aware of showing the celebrations in Palestine. But the forces want their son's death to have meaning, and they're pushing lawmakers to pass the Taylor Force Act, 
which would cut off USAID to the PA until it stops rewarding terrorists. This is, is a, a legacy for him, but he, we feel that he, this is what he would, what, would have wanted us to do. They watched from the House floor this week as lawmakers unanimously passed the bill. This acts as an incentive to terrorism, and this must stop. And that's what this bill will do. More money is going to terrorist payments than goes to the entire civil service of the Palestinian Authority. Following the House vote, the forces hope to see it pass the full Senate and make its way to the president's desk. Reporting from Capitol Hill, Abigail Robertson, CBN News. And we'll continue to follow this story for sure. Gordon? Well, we want you to support this story. We want you to support this bill. It's time to end the state-sponsored terrorism that's coming out of the Palestinian Authority. This isn't something new. It's something they've been doing for decades. And when you understand it's a culture that glorifies terrorism, that they name streets after terrorists, that they dedicate uh, squares in, in Ramallah to terrorists, and this isn't something far ago, long ago, decades ago. Uh, this is recently, in, in the past year, they put up a monument to the refrigerator bomber. And this guy, what he did is he packed a refrigerator uh, with explosives and he goes onto Zion Street in Jerusalem and blows it up and kills 15 innocent people. And somehow or other, that makes him a hero. Uh, someone that to be recognized. Well, this needs to end because this is being paid for by U.S. tax dollars. That means you and I are supporting it. And it's time to rise up and let our representatives know, no, uh, you don't get to do that. You don't get to take our tax money to pay for terrorism. So we have two things that we want you to do. We get the graphic up. We've got a website for you where you can go and sign a petition. Um, we want to present that position, petition uh, to Congress, to the Senate right now, because that's where the bill is. Uh, there's probably going to be a conference, but we need to stop our tax money going for terrorism and end pay to slay. And if you want to be a part of it, you can go to cbnnews.com slash faith in action or just call us 1-800-700-7000. Now, here's something more. Because it's right now active, the Senate's going to be taking it up the, the coming week. Uh, we want you to call your representative, your senator. Uh, there's a special number for it, 202-224-3121. Uh, call the Capitol switchboard. That's the number for the Capitol switchboard. Uh, ask to speak to your senator uh, and say, I want to voice my support to the Taylor Force Act. That's what, that, what, that's what we're calling for. We need to end pay to slay, but it's the Taylor Force Act. So call 202-224-3121. Let your voice be heard. Wendy? Amen. <clears throat> Speaking of voice. <laughs> all right, well, coming up, meet the couple who put their struggle to conceive on YouTube. We wanted to be honest with you guys on how, how emotional things are and, and tell you like the truth yeah. and not just glamorize it. Watch what happens when love multiplies after this. Well, you can always get information about adoption by doing an internet search. But there's nothing like hearing from someone with personal experience. Well, Charlene Aaron introduces us to one couple who started a YouTube channel to show people what infertility and adoption are like. And now they have close to 50,000 followers watching them daily. I love, love life. And to hear um, Phil and Alex Congelier tell it, just being together is nothing short of a miracle. He was the loud, crazy type where you heard him from half a mile away and you knew that he was coming. For her, it was like, oh, that's totally never gonna be a guy that I would ever date or marry <laughs> or so why would I spend a ton of time with him? And so. But love took over. As a married couple, the pastor and nurse wanted more. People grow up wanting to have certain careers. My career that I really wanted, I wanted to be a mom, and then it didn't happen. Honestly, there were these moments where we were like, 
God, if you're so good, why mm -hmm. do you keep us from what is good? The dedication to their dream led Phil and Alex to pursue adoption. Almost immediately, God gave them a sign. A pregnant woman in their church wanted to place her baby for adoption. He hands me the prayer request card and it, it says, um, we're 37 and a half weeks pregnant and looking for a family to adopt. Nine days later, Kinsley Grace was born. Phil and Alex decided to add to their family again, but this time they didn't want to do it alone. Alex had an idea. Why don't they use YouTube to put themselves out there? Phil wasn't so sure. Who would watch? Why would they watch? And what would be the point of them watching? Alex prevailed, and soon with full transparency, they were documenting their infertility treatments and adoption journey. They said, you have endometriosis everywhere. Okay, you ready? No. Along the way, their YouTube audience began to grow, and then something they didn't see coming. We got contacted by a birth mom asking if we would consider adoption again. A woman following them on social media asked if they would be interested in adopting her baby, due in a few like weeks. We said, yes, God, do whatever you want with us. Yeah. And this stuff happens. This they put treatments crazy, on hold and began documenting their second adoption. And they shared it all, highs and lows with raw emotion. Like we're meeting our daughter Insane. tomorrow. tomorrow. It's, it's, it's going to be hard not seeing her for another 12 hours. We wanted to be honest with you guys on how, how emotional things are and, and tell you like the truth yeah. and not just glamorize it. As they edited and uploaded videos of Callie Joe's adoption story, thousands subscribed to their channel for there, updates. There. Birth mom ended up going and signing papers today. Do you want to hold Callie? Callie! Callie! The overwhelming majority of people were coming to our channel and commenting saying, the love that your birth mom is showing is more than I think I could ever show my own children. And the second was, I now want to go and love people in that same way. And so what, what we did by telling her story was actually pull out of the heart of what we want to do, which is multiply the love that is in us. You'll see the family wearing t-shirts that say love multiplies. What started as an adoption fundraiser has now evolved into a full-time calling. Phil and Alex want it to become the resource that they never had. If something doesn't exist, it's our responsibility to make it happen. And so we created Love Multiplies and it is a place for people to come and feel encouraged and supported and, and educated about infertility, about adoption, and about growing healthy families. The number one comment that we hear back in this phase of life of trying to build a family but it's not happening is, I just don't have anyone that I can turn to. No one understands my grief. And what's next for the congeliers still following their dream. Since our interview, another fertility treatment. And another heartbreak. No, it's, it's negative. I'm so sorry. But they know God has a plan and maybe more surprises for them in their future. Can you say World? World Adoption Day! And we're all invited along on the journey. Do you know what adoption means? What does adoption mean? It's a smiley face. Smiley face. I, it means smiley face? What a wonderful thing to do, to say, yes, I'm going to take in the orphan. I'm going to be a part of their life. Uh, and it's a wonderful journey. If you'd like more information on Phil and Alex, you can go Find a link to the Love Multiplies channel and their nonprofit organization. All you have to do is go to cbnnews.com. That's a wonderful thing. Wendy, what's next? Up next, a man already dealing with crippling back pain develops Bell's palsy. I could not see. 
out of my left eye. Now I can't even see, but what am I going to do? I can't work. Stay tuned to see how he receives two supernatural healings at one time. Well, one morning, Charles Lockridge woke up and both sides of his face had fallen. He was later diagnosed with a severe case of Bell's palsy. Charles had already been suffering from acute back pain for three years and was now even more in desperate need of healing. In 2013, Charles Lockridge was sitting down in a chair when it broke. Feet went up and I landed on my back. The next day, he started feeling a sharp pain in his back between the shoulder blades. It just wouldn't go away, it wouldn't stop. And it just felt like somebody was jabbing me all the time or something. After battling the pain for a few months, he went to his doctor who put him in physical therapy. It helped for a while, but the pain soon came back. Almost two years later, the pain became more insistent and it was starting to become a, uh, a regular part of my life again. That's when I went back to the doctors. Surgery was an option, but his doctor first wanted him to try a more extreme physical therapy regime. They sent me off to what's called a, a back boot camp, where you specifically work on strengthening your back. It's intensive. The therapy only gave him temporary relief, and Charles found it difficult to keep up his normal life. It impacts your quality of life because you're in pain. And being in pain wears you out. You can't do a lot of the things that you would like to do. When there's pain involved, you just want relief. One morning in 2016, he woke up to another problem. I could not see out of my left eye. All I could see was some shapes and some colors and everything would be very, very fuzzy. He was diagnosed with Bell's palsy, a condition that weakens the muscles in the face. It also left his eye red and swollen. If my back's messed up and this is messed up and now I can't even see, what am I gonna do? I can't work. I, I couldn't make any sense out of it. The doctor gave him medication for his facial muscles, but it would take at least four to six months for his eye to heal. They really had nothing for the eye, just to wait and see at that point. I just kept praying. I kept praying. You know, sometimes my frustration would, would come out and, I'd, you know, hey, what's taking so long? Two months later, Charles was watching TV at his home. If I'm at home by myself, I'll turn on the TV and I'll look for something that I think will lift my spirits. That day, I just ran across the 700 Club, then Terry starts praying. Someone else, you've had a fall that's really thrown your back out of whack, and uh, nothing you take seems to help at all. God's healing that for you right now. Just receive it. Thank you, Lord. Thank, Thank you, Lord. And I didn't necessarily know that it was for me. But when she prayed for the eye, Someone else, you have a condition with your eye. It's like the very rim, top and bottom, gets red, and there's a crustiness that comes from it, but it's very irritating. God's healing that for you right now. I just knew. I just knew that it was, that it was for me. And I started saying thank you. I started saying thank you, Lord. So I woke up the next day, and, and the eye was better, like just all the way better. As soon as I woke up, I noticed it. Charles also noticed something else. Over the next week, all of a sudden it dawned on me that my back doesn't hurt anymore. With his back pain completely gone, Charles went back to work and has been working pain-free ever since. Sometimes it, it takes trust in him when it doesn't look like there's anything happening, where every indicator is, no, it's not going to work. and. I think sometimes God looks for those situations because then it's clearly Him. And God does look for those situations. The Bible records that Abraham did not consider the deadness of his own body, but he was fully persuaded that he who had promised was able. So often when we're praying, we're asking for you know, some sort of immediate thing, and, and we start looking at our symptoms instead of looking at the promise of God. 
Realize what Abraham did. It's the key to miracles. Don't consider the deadness of your body, but be fully persuaded that he who has promised is able. It's the key. It's the faith that moves mountains where you don't doubt in your heart. Now, Wendy and I are going to pray. We've got some prayer requests from people that have come in from across the nation. And here's one to be healed of brain lesions, uh, then strength and patience and diligence to be a better parent, the release of persecuted Christians worldwide. That's one we can all join in. in. That my son will be able to adopt a baby. Wendy, what do you have? <clears throat> my family that is being torn apart by divorce, my brother to be healed of PTSD, my grandson to be healed of an immune system disorder, yes, Lord, and financial restoration and blessing. Whatever your need, realize that God wants to answer it. That's number one. You don't have to convince him. He loves his children. He loves you. He numbers the very hairs on your head. So you don't have to convince him. You don't have to bargain. What you have to do is believe. And so let's do that right now. And the Bible says, when two or more agree, touching anything, it shall be done. So let's believe. Let's believe that. And let's reach out and let's touch these requests <laughs> and come together in prayer and realize God wants to work miracles. He sent his son to work miracles. And Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. We can count on him. His word never fails. Let's pray. Lord, we lift up these prayer requests to you, and we just join together with them. And for those that are suffering with needs for healing in their body, this one who has asked, please pray for my brain lesions. Lord God, we just come into agreement. We come into agreement with everyone who needs healing right now. And we say to them, be healed in Jesus' name by the authority given to us as believers in Jesus Christ. We appropriate that authority. We appropriate the gift of faith now. And we say, be healed. And symptoms be gone now. In Jesus' name. Someone you're crying out for um, acid reflux, and it's really gotten bad, and there's been damage to your esophagus. And so the Lord wants to speak to you specifically to say, not only will I heal the acid reflux, I will also heal the esophagus. And you don't have to live in fear. So in Jesus' name, be healed. Receive it now. And that burning leave you now in Jesus' name. Wendy, God gave you. Families going through divorce, Lord, we ask for Christmas miracles for families all over the country, all over the world that are going through this awful thing right now, God, that you would restore. You are the God of restoration. And Lord, also people that have been overseas, our military men and women that are suffering with PTSD, God, that you would do a miracle for them, God, that you would even erase the trauma from their memory, God, that they would live normal, happy lives as civilians or as veterans in Jesus name. Lord, we also pray for those who are crying out for children and whether that's through adoption or through natural birth, we just pray over them, give them the power to give life, the power and ability to reproduce your commandment over us, be fruitful and multiply. And so we just ask for the fulfillment of that in their bodies now in Jesus' name. And Lord, we also lift Wendy to you. And we just ask that you would restore her voice and give her peace right now. Let your presence be on her, in her, all around her. For we ask it all in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And amen. If you need prayer, we're here for you. All you have to do is pick up the phone and call us. 1-800-700-7000. We believe in prevailing prayer. Jesus taught about prevailing prayer. So we pray until you get an answer. So call us. one 800 Seven hundred seven thousand. Wendy? I received that. Thank you. Wow. All right. Well, still ahead, the host of Lydia's Kitchen brings her culinary talents to our studio kitchen. 
Chef extraordinaire Lydia Bastianat creates a holiday feast Italian style coming up. And welcome back to the 700 Club. The Department of Justice has begun a federal investigation into the practices of Planned Parenthood and its alleged sale of fetal tissue. Fox News reports the DOJ formally requested unredacted documents from the Senate Judiciary Committee. That committee led the congressional investigation into Planned Parenthood. An assistant attorney general for the DOJ wrote, the records are intended for investigative use only. The FBI first asked for the unredacted documents last month. Operation Blessing is helping young Nigerians fulfill their dreams by giving them the chance to get an education, despite terrorist attacks from the radical Islamic group Boko Haram. Here's just one example. Omega loves to study and read, but her dreams of becoming an attorney were put in danger when Boko Haram nearly destroyed her village. Terrorists demolished her father's farm. He could barely put food on the table and no longer could afford to send Omega to school. Operation Blessing stepped in and awarded Omega a scholarship. Now she is back in school and is thrilled to resume her studies. She still hopes to become an attorney. You can learn more about Operation Blessing by visiting its website, ob.org. Gordon and Wendy will be back with much more of the 700 Club. It's coming up right after this. Well, Lydia Bastianich has been bringing people together over f food her entire life. In her latest book, she shares recipe recipes infused with her char characteristic warmth and love of celebrating life, Italian style, of course. Buongiorno, I'm Lydia Bastianich. Join Chef Lydia is the Emmy Award winning public television host of Lydia's Kitchen, the owner of four acclaimed New York City restaurants, and a best selling cookbook author. For years, she's been bringing people together to celebrate her two passions, family and great Italian food. In her latest cookbook, Celebrate Like an Italian, Lydia gives flavorful, easy to follow recipes that will add Italian style and flair to make any get together feel like a party. She also invites you to join her this holiday season as she pays homage to the men and women of our military in a one hour PBS Christmas special called Lydia Celebrates America, Homegrown Heroes, which airs on December 15th. Well, please welcome to the 700 Club, Chef Lydia, and it's a, such an honor to have Gordon. you. I've got to tell you, I'm a huge fanboy. I went to your restaurant in New York, and I had the pear and pecorino ravioli, and oh, it was a did. revelation. Oh, it was so good. You didn't tell me you were coming. Next time I want to know <laughs> when you were there. Uh, well, it was it was quite an event and um, beautiful food. Thank you, thank beautiful you, thank food. you, thank you for having me. Such a pleasure being here. You are doing something that's really close to my heart. You're really with this special you've got coming for uh, our soldiers. Yeah. And I, tell us about it. Well, you know, uh, I'm an immigrant. I came here, I was 12 years old, and mm. I come from a part of Italy that was given to communist Yugoslavia. So we were caught behind in communism when I was young, escaped back into Italy, and ultimately uh, uh, the 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 the, the, the God gave us this great opportunity to come to the United States. I was 12. And I'm forever grateful because to having had this opportunity, uh, you know, thanking God and thanking the young men that conserve that freedom. You know, freedom isn't free, as no, they say. And, and so it's my way of saying thank you to them and to America. And it is this episode, it's in the Christmas spirit, and it's all about food. Uh, I go and I find the veterans, when they come back, you know, what do they do? Sometimes they're kind of, uh, you know, how do we get back into society? Mm -hmm. Well, all of these veterans get back through nature, becoming a farmer, raising animals, and they're nurturing America through food now and was such a, for me it was a great great uh, experience and it's a special that'll be out I think yeah. December 15th and I encourage everyone to watch it it's it's really incredible what you're doing for soldiers oh. and that is great a lot of people don't know this story of, of yours that in 1958 you arrived here with nothing nothing we were brought here by the catholic relief services we had nobody here and you know we were taken care of uh, people were kind enough uh they 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 set us up in a little hotel then they found a job for my parents they found a little home and uh gordon I, you know i can't uh, express the gratitude people would come 
and they, they fill their home with, with sheets, with, with towels, with food, our covers with food. Mm. So I, you know, I'm a recipient of the goodness of people. And, uh, you know, God has been good to me. So, you know, I have this sense that I need to continue that. Did you ever dream, uh, you know, that you would one day have these wonderful never. restaurants? Never, never, I mean, never dreamed. What, what a tremendous blessing for you. It, it certainly is. You know, and it's not something that I planned. It's the opportunities that came that were kind of offered to me, and I took them as I went along. And, and what the, the big blessing is also that my family is with me. My children are now with me. My mother, who's 97, lives with me. So it's a continuum of the family doing what we love. Well, here's something that you may not know. Lydia's cooked for not just one, but two popes. I have. And no pressure on that. <laughs> what, do you, what do you cook for a pope? Uh, that's a big question. You know, when the first, the first Pope Benedict came and I was asked um, to, 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 you know, I consider, oh my God, what am I going to cook? So that became a problem. But, you know, Pope Benedict is German. Again, we come from that Northeastern. So I had in my stash a little mm. bit. I made strudel for him. I made ah. spetzels for him. I made uh, a goulash for him but I did have to go to the Vatican and we sent the menus to the Vatican they approved it and then we cooked and when Pope Francis came you know he's uh, uh, from Argentina, Argentina big pieces yeah. of meat but the Vatican next to me he was on, supposedly on a diet mm. so he is Italian origin Piemonte so I made for him risotto uh, veal and he loved all of that uh, uh, and you know it's it's still uh, part of my life. Uh, well, every, I'll say everyone should love your cooking. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank Again, you. What, 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 what do you have here for us? We've well, got to walk you know, through the, the from, whole listing the here. Book, this is kind of a festivity that one can mm -hmm. do, that the audience can do at home, and it's easy. And the number one, what I would recommend, is a, a buffet antipasto. Mm -hmm. You just spread it out, a lot of cold cuts, uh, olives, uh, uh, fruit, a big hunk of uh, uh, cheese. And this uh, is really pressure. easy to do. You easy. just go, you, just you buy it, it, and then spread it out. It depends how many you have. You can make a whole big table. You make it out, put some uh, wine, let them pick, enjoy. In the meantime, the next course, what I recommend. I, I hear this is a very special cheese. Grana Padano is the best. Did you? Did you? Did I you? had a taste in the break, and it's. Yeah, I will agree. That's a very special. We'll cheese. munch on it later. Okay. It's the, I use it, you know, just for eating like this. Also for pasta and for that, it's great. Nutritionally, also sound. Oh really? That, yeah, absolutely. Cheese is good for you. Yes. Well, it has a little fat, but forget about that. It has the, <laughs> cal it has the calcium, the calcium and the vitamins. It's good, especially for growing children. This I'm going to go home and tell my wife. Because <laughs> I'm a huge cheese lover. Yeah. And but you know, if you do this, if you spread it over salads and things yeah. like that. You kind of spread it out. Okay. Then the next thing what I would recommend Lasagna. is the oven. You know, something yeah. baked in the oven, pasta in the oven. So they're all eating. They go to the table, and voila, you bring the steaming pot of lasagna. And what I would recommend also, if you have a lot of people, you know, lasagna is great, but make two or three of those. So you mm. spread them on the table so people can help themselves. Again, make it, making it, make it easier. Easy. And here I have some garlic mashed potatoes. My grandmother used to make them. And, and you use olive oil with that. Olive oil. Yeah, you don't need even butter. Uh, yeah. We didn't use much butter. Which is so, so, uh, that's frankly new. I'm I'm used to butter and cream yeah? and milk and but well, olive oil. Try, try it, Lydia salad. So right. try the Italian salad. How do you right. how do you do the garlic cloves in it? Because well, it you, looks to me sorry. like they're roasted. You, you roast it. You roast them with a little bit of oil, nice and until they almost fall apart. Mm -hmm. Then you use that oil and whatever and more fresh oil. And, and that just really mash. changes the flavor. Doesn't Absolutely. It? And you mash. Sometimes I even like to mash the garlic so you can't even see it. It goes into the potatoes themselves, and it's really really good. And that recipe is that recipe in your book? Uh, it uh, it is. It's in it's in the book. But also, you know, uh, the website. I think it's mm -hmm. on on your website uh -huh. as well. Yeah. The so broccoli. if you want if you want that recipe, you go just to lydiazitaly.com. Okay. You will get it, and it's in the book as well. Right. And we, we'll come back to the main course. But of course, vegetables. Italians love their vegetables. Broccolini, garlic, and oil. Again. Oil, the butter. So you take the vegetables. You do that in a pan or do you roast in it a in pan. the oven? In a pan like that, mm -hmm. garlic oil, you wash the vegetables, you put them in the pan, stir them, put a, put a lid on it, and slowly, the, 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 it's a, maybe a little bit of water, and it kind of steam, and it'll get all that garlic uh, flavor all over the oh. vegetables. So, you know. It's starting to get hungry. There you, <laughs> there right. you go. And of course, dessert. <laughs> For dessert, uh -huh. I would come back to a buffet. 
again, mm -hmm. make a buffet like that. This is an almond and chocolate chip tart. Very simple, very easy. You can make it in advance. This is this is a beautiful, it looks so beautiful, it's so yeah. complex. It's yeah. leftover bread, you know, the appreciation, mm -hmm. the respect not to waste food. It's leftover bread that you soak, I make a, the recipe is there, that you make this melted chocolate with a little bit of rum in there or whatever, and you dunk the bread until it's sopped up all the sauce, and then you layer it like a parfait with whipped cream, chocolate syrup, and toasted almonds. I would think that, uh, when I first saw it, I thought it was a mousse, but that's actually bread. No, no, it's bread. Bre bread. Bread, for yesterday's bread, that you soak it up in this in this uh, melted chocolate. Who knows? Uh, I just learned something. I didn't know you could do Oh, that. yeah, I don't know. My, That's beautiful. Well, you have to use tiramisu. It's also based yes. on that premises, you know, on the premises <laughs> of leftover cake or whatever. Soak it and... And, and okay. so the so main we're going to cook. Yeah, we're going to cook. I don't know. If the, I don't know if the stove works. I We're think it's yeah. I still, <laughs> but what what I did I did work. Uh, I, we did get prepared. So you brown your 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 uh, uh, pork chops. Mm -hmm. Season it salt and pepper. Brown it. Pull them out. In here you have apple. Apples? Nice pieces of apple and that and, you onions. and onions. Yes, you just just, just like that. Here Color I oil. have I have some dried now, cherries. Those are dried cherries, and yes. a lot of people don't cook with. Dried fruits. I love, I love dry fruit. They give you so much uh, flavor. Mm -hmm. And and I add a little, little bit of honey. honey. Just a little bit. The honey will kind of so caramelize. So you soak them, you get the, yeah, you the get, dried fruits yeah, and you hydrated, can so, yeah, and then you, you can, put some honey in. Right. And, and I put a little bit of vinegar, too. You know, the so vinegar. So kind of the sweetness. The sweetness and also the fat, just like that. So you mix it well. And this cherries, you know, they've they been marinating. You can do it in bourbon. You can do it in stock. You can do it. And you add it just to a hot pan, just like that. Mm -hmm. And then you put the, you pork let chops. this sizzle. You put the pork chops right back in, just like that. And, you know, this is sizzling away. Okay. And once it's, it's, it's kind of burnt, uh, uh, burning away and really getting bubbly, mm -hmm. you... Take it and put it into the oven. And I exactly. Through the magic of television, we have one that's already done. You, ha you have one there? We've got one in Okay. Here. And it is bubbly. Yeah. Ah, okay. I don't know if we can get a close-up on that. That looks beautiful. Doesn't that look beautiful? Mmm, you see? And you see the, 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 the juice oh, here wow. and all that? And you can, this is for four people. This is a nice, hefty portion. Yeah. I mean, you know, why that's, not? It's that's the holiday. a B-sized portion. <laughs> I, yeah. I was thinking of that, Gordon. <laughs> and, uh, and, but you can multiply. Uh, uh -huh. You know, you can do like this, brown it, and make it in a roasting pan. You can put eight pieces, you can put 12 pieces, and voila. And it's an easy dish to do for parties. Absolutely. It's not complicated. It's not, and you have it, uh, you pull it out of the oven, and you put it right on the table, just like that, or on a platter. And all of these dishes, I would say, are easy. Anybody can do this. I mean, this uh, is... I, I think so. You know, I get a lot of... Oh, I can't cook. I can't do this. But everybody can cook something, uh, Gordon. And this is quite doable. And, you know. And this is a feast. Isn't that beautiful? All right. I'm okay. going to eat this in the break. But before we get to the break, we've got a book for you. And I encourage you to get it. It's called Lydia's Celebrate Like an Italian. And it's available wherever books are sold. The recipes you saw here today are also there. We also have an exclusive interview with Lydia on our Facebook page. I'll, to watch that, just go to facebook.com slash 700 Club. And Lydia, thank you. Oh, thank, thank you. you bon Natale. For the soldiers. Thank you very much yes. for having me yes. on. All right. Wendy, over to you. Delicious. Wow. Well, up next, an eight-year-old can't make it to school on time because she has to fetch water for her family. See how a well changes her life after this. Anu is an eight-year-old who gets in trouble every day at school. That's because she's always late. But it's not her fault. She can't make it to school on time because she spends her mornings walking two miles to get water. Every day, Anu has a lot of extra chores around the house. Her mother had polio as a little girl and needs the help. I feel sad for my mother. 
I do all the work I can for her, but sometimes I just want to play with other children. Collecting water for the family is a big task for Anu. She walks two miles round trip. Every morning and every evening, I must get water from the open well. The water is heavy for me, and my hands and legs hurt a lot. It takes so long, and it's so hard to get water. Anu can't make it to school on time. I am always late, and the teacher punishes me. Sometimes she doesn't let me in the school. Anu and her family are Christian. They ask Jesus daily for a solution to their water problem. When CBN found out about the village through a local pastor, we quickly dug a well there. Now everyone in the village has clean water close to home. It's so easy for me to get water. My hands and legs don't hurt anymore. I get to school on time, and I even have time to play with my friends. Thank you, CBN, for giving us this well. And thank you. If you are a CBN partner, then you help bring water to that little girl and her entire village. If you'd like to be a part, all you have to do is go to your phone right now, the number on your screen, and just say, yes, I want to join the 700 Club, 65 cents a day, $20 a month is all it takes. When you do, we have a new gift for you. It's called Ask Anything. This is past new teaching. We'll send this right out to you. Well, let's get right into our email. We've got some, some great questions, and we're going to start with this from, from Nikki. What is the biblical significance to moving the Israeli capital to Jerusalem? What does it all mean, Gordon? Well, it, it means that Bible prophecy is being fulfilled. Uh, we started the show with this first. If we can bring it back, this is from Isaiah chapter 60. Arise, Jerusalem, let your light shine for all to see, for the glory of the Lord rises to shine upon you. Now, if we can get the next part of it. All nations will come to your light. Mighty kings will come to see your radiance. That's what's playing out right now as the U.S. moves its embassy to Jerusalem. Uh, it's a symbolic act, yes, but it's also encouraging other nations who support Israel, stand with Israel, to do the same thing, to say, yes, it's time to recognize that Jerusalem is the capital of, of Israel. And in so doing, they're fulfilling Bible prophecy uh, that the mighty kings of the earth will come to Jerusalem. Uh, so it's a wonderful day. Uh, and God's light is shining. Uh, it's also pointing out the darkness that exists over the, uh, over the nations. Uh, so at the same time, this wonderful light is shining. It's shining that, oh, there's darkness uh, and people aren't seeing, they're not hearing, and uh, we need to be that light for them to show them the way. So uh, it's a wonderful time. Uh, our generation is seeing Bible prophecy fulfilled in ways that generations before us have prayed for, have longed for, have dreamed of. And the wonderful thing is we get to live it. It's a great day to be alive, isn't it? Well, Lindsay writes in, what is Bitcoin? Is it something Christians should be looking into? Uh, Bitcoin is a sort of a new currency. Um, and what it is is it uses uh, algorithms. It's called blockchain, and there's a lot of math behind it. Uh, and essentially, it means that it's sort of unhackable value created uh, digitally. Uh, and it's being touted as a replacement to gold. Uh, it's being touted as a new world currency where there's no Federal Reserve and there's no central bank and there's no government involved. Uh, so it's creating quite the buzz. Uh, as Christians, uh, should we be looking into it? Well, I'm uh, I'm not sure um, being a Christian or not being a Christian is part of the equation. Um, I'm looking at the value of it and going, this thing is getting a little out of control. It's kind of reminding me uh, of um, tulip bulb mania. Uh, and the price just seems to continually go up and up and up and up and up. And whenever I see that, I get very worried because when it goes down, it, it takes an escalator up. It takes an elevator down. And... Uh, should you invest in it? Uh, I would say maybe not. Invest in things that you really understand. Uh, don't get involved in these kind of speculative things. Uh, this is, you know, let's, let's not get crazy with it. 
Well, we leave you these words from Numbers chapter 6. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. God bless.